Fish on. Fish on, guys. He just sped up something. What did he spit up there? What is that? Look at this, guys. That is crazy. What's up, guys? I'm super excited about today. Guys, behind me, we have the Nolichucky River, and I have only one goal today, and that's to film underwater strikes from smallmouth bass eating grampus. So guys, if you know me, you know that I'm gonna take a quick look around, see if we can make this place a little bit nicer when we find it, and then we're gonna hit the water and go film some underwater strikes from smallmouth bass. All right, people. The day after July 4th, we've got some shoe soles. Go ahead and grab those. Got some cardboard, tin foil right here. We're gonna fill up this grocery bag, but here's some fireworks, leftover fireworks stuff. Here's a flip flop. Got a juice box. A floaty, single floaty from a kid. Here's the lid to a Heineken sauce container. A tennis ball. Ooh, here we go. Pack of smokes. Empty, of course. Piece of plastic. Look at all this piled up trash. We're gonna leave our bag here as well. All right, let's get to fishing, guys. All right, guys, just put on the polarized sunglasses so I can see a little bit better in the water. We're gonna go out and see if we can catch some grampus right behind me by flipping over stones and using a very specialized net. We just got a basic little bucket here where you can fill up with water. And then we've also got a Fraybill net. It's got a very pliable, bendy uh, front, and that's really, really important. And I'll show you why. So guys, the reason it's really nice to have this bendy net is because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out where there's more of a current. I'm gonna stick this net down on the bottom and look how it kind of conforms to the rock right here. That's really important because anything upstream as I'm starting to like splash around and flip rocks is gonna flow down into the net. And that's how I'm gonna be able to catch anything in here. If you guys are interested in learning more about this specific technique, I have a very special video by Eric Baldwin where he teaches me exactly how to catch grampus as well as crawdads. I'm gonna leave a link in the top right corner. So if you're interested, check it out. Oh, there's a grampus on the outside of the net. Got him. So guys, there's our first grampus of the day. So let's go ahead and throw him in here and then we'll make sure we don't have anything else. But. We've already got one, that's a good start guys. Guys, here's a great place. We got a lot of stones, we got a good sweeping current. So let's get down in here and see if we can flip over a few of these and uh, find some grampus underneath. There's a grampus. All right guys, there's our second grampus. Again, not a huge one, that one's maybe about an inch to an inch and a half long. All right, there's a bunch of stones and boulders right down here that I think we're gonna check out. Oh yeah, got a big one. I love these big ones, guys. Look at that one, yes. Look at this current, guys. This is exactly what you want right here. I can tell you it's hard work flipping these stones, but it's well worth it to catch some grampus. I'll tell you, the thing that kind of amazes me is that I, I don't catch a lot of crawdads doing this, and you would think I would catch more crawdads doing this. There's a big one, wow. And he's not coming out with this current. I'm gonna go ahead and keep flipping. See if we can get another one. Yep, there's a second one. All right, guys, so we got one tiny one and one monster. Let's go ahead and drop the monster in there. And then this tiny one just got on the outside of the net. That's how small he is. I'm still gonna throw him in. I brought multiple hook sizes to accommodate all different sizes of baits here. There's a big one. Guys, we're putting together a pretty good bait tank at the moment. Look at all these guys down in there. Oh, and some that are climbing up the edge. Look at that. So there's one. Let's see if we can get a few more. There's two, there's three. That's our first triple. Guys, I have found a direct correlation. Once the current gets so strong, that's really when you catch them. It's gotta be a strong current where it really knocks them down. There's two. Good, there's a third one right there. Okay, is there any more? Did we quadruple? Yeah, we did. We've got a fourth one right there. Wow, that was a good haul, guys. It's all about that fast moving current. Here's a decent little current. We'll see if we can maybe get one to two Grampus. Oh, there's one. Yeah, so we got one. Look at that. It makes me very happy, guys. I used to struggle to find these, to catch these. And now I can come out with confidence, knowing and reading the water, knowing exactly where to catch them. And the thing that's amazing is just how many Grampus are in this particular river. It's unbelievable. All right, there's one. Man, guys, so the success rate, very high today. There's one. Man, I feel like we're just on fire right now. All right, there's another one right there. All right, guys, well, we got plenty of bait. Let me go ahead and show you the haul real quick. Check that out. Got a bunch of Grampus down in here. 
Um, so I'm super, super excited about that. Guys, the reason that Grampus works so well is they are protein packed snacks for bass. They hang out underneath rocks all day and if they ever get knocked loose, it is an automatic no brainer for bass. They go in and they eat it because it's so good for them for growth. What we're gonna be doing is imitating Grampus that have been knocked loose from rocks and are free flowing in an area where there are tons of bass. And guys, it won't take long as you'll see for bass to key in on them. They can smell them. They have a very unique, distinct smell. Nothing else on earth even smells like them, but the fish love it. So let's head upstream to one of my best spots and let's drop a camera down there and see what happens. All right, we're gonna get this party started, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a big juicy one here. Check this out. So we've got the Go Fish Cam right here. So guys, we got about 10 inches of leader between the Go Fish Cam and the hook. Guys, I'm gonna stop the video right here real quick just to give you a little background on exactly what's going on here. Guys, the previous day I was at the exact same spot with the Go Fish Cam, caught five bass almost instantaneously. Every time I cast, there was something happening. And then I find out that the Go Fish Cam actually locked up two minutes into the recording and didn't get any of that footage. You guys can imagine in the background, I'm super nervous because I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get this recording or not. And I know it's really, really special where I'm at. So. That's a little background. Let's get to the footage. I hope you guys enjoy. And we're gonna walk out here into the sandbar. And all I'm gonna do guys, now that I've walked out, is I'm gonna pitch it right down here, downstream into the sandbar. So we're just gonna pitch it barely forward. I'm gonna put my finger on the line. I'm gonna wait for a bite and see if there's any smallmouth down there. So as you guys can see, the Grampus rolls over quickly and out of nowhere, a tiny little smallmouth shows up and takes a peck at the, at the Grampus. And the Grampus is kind of stunned. He kind of keeps rolling over and this smallmouth is very, very interested. Meanwhile, I'm up there on the surface wondering where the fish are. <laughs> Let's reel it in, cast again. Okay, so I kind of just barely lobbed it there. We're gonna have to go a little further probably, but we'll just see if there's anything right in front of us on this sandbar. And if they're willing to bite, I don't know. So guys, as you can see, a bass slowly creeps up around the corner. Meanwhile, I'm just wondering why I'm not getting a bite. If only I knew the bass was right there. Also, I may have to add a little bit of length to my leader. I'm not sure yet. A lot of things to be kind of squared away. Go a little bit deeper. So guys, as the Grampus is floating down to the bottom, we get a kind of a poor angle there, but it doesn't really matter. You're gonna see multiple bass come rolling in here. Um, they can see it, they like what they're seeing, and uh, it's just a matter of time till there's a bite. Um, however, I'm questioning everything on the surface. I may have to go a little longer with it, guys. I don't know. We'll do one last cast, and then we're gonna review the footage. Let's go a little further out this time. I really lobbed it, because I wanna make sure We get in a good zone for these smallmouth. So guys, here comes the one immediately. It goes and looks at the Grampus. It likes what it sees. And guys, I think they were just a little bit more tentative because of the previous day and how many I had hooked, but they were definitely there. They were definitely interested in the Grampus. So guys, I cast really, really close to me, maybe only 10 feet away. And uh, it floats down to the gravelly sandbar and the, the line itself gets wrapped around the go fish cam. Um, and so these fish now are having to kind of determine, are we gonna bite something that's right next to a camera? They're super interested. They're zooming around looking at it. And I go, man, I need to recast this. I need to recast a little further away. So guys, this is where the action starts to pick up. You will see as the Grampus is floating down that a smallmouth begins to size up the Grampus. And it's because there's kind of a switch that's about to happen in their brains where they're gonna start to bite. So there was the first bite. Guys, it's really hard to know when the Grampus is in the mouth and when it's not. So I tried to set the hook. Once you set the hook, they're way less likely to bite again until the next cast. And so I decided to reel in, but I did finally fill my first bite, which was super encouraging. Um, and now I know that the bite's on. So it's gonna float back down again and watch the fish as it's drifting down. They're fired up now. They now are um, in feeding frenzy mode. There's another bite right there. Again, I don't know if it's in or not inside the bass's mouth. So I set the hook again, miss again. I'm getting kind of frustrated because I'm like, okay, with a bulky camera, with this heavy line, you just don't know. Typically you want to give 
a lot of line to the bass when you fill that bite to kind of let them take it into their mouth and you just can't do it with this particular rig. But I'm very encouraged now because the bite is happening. So watch it again, guys, as it floats down. Now it's becoming this uh, a target, right? Um, I'm casting a little bit wider left, a little bit deeper now. And um, I'm starting to get that hope that, yeah, this is going to happen. And just like that, it gets attacked again. Almost immediately, we've got a feed and frizzy happening, um, which is really, really fun. And again, I'm now questioning things. <laughs> I set the hook, miss again. All right, guys. So we're just going to pitch it right out here. Let it land, let it float down. We got smallmouth down there for sure now, I know that. So yeah, it gets back down to the bottom and immediately another smallmouth starts to kind of peck at it. And I'm just trying to patiently wait, trying to kind of figure out how to catch these fish while using a camera um, where you can't really give the fish a lot of line. Um, so again, I miss it. I'm starting to get a little frustrated, but I'm also hopeful that I'm getting some really cool footage. And so I keep on going cast again. I also know that there is a feeding frenzy happening. They are now fully um, prepared to bite and that's exactly what they're doing there. And you know, it's just a matter of time until I finally hook up. I stole the Grampus. Shoot. Alright guys, he stole the Grampus. We're gonna have to get another one on. But we got, we got bass down there which is really exciting. That's what I was hoping for. So it was kind of slow at first so I got a little nervous there but all right, we just grabbed another Mondo guy. This guy is huge. Check this one out. It's hard to know how big these smallmouth are. They're right down below the surface, but this right here should bring in any smallmouth. They use a nice looking Grampus. So guys, we're gonna walk back out on the sandbar. All right guys, so I cast back out with some newfound confidence after pumping myself up. I know I can catch fish. I've caught five with this rig before on the same exact location. And so I just continue to fish hard. I miss another one there, but check out that sucker fish sitting on the bottom. He's looking at the camera going, what in the world? And just to the right of the screen, the Grampus and the smallmouth are battling it out. The smallmouth wants to eat him badly. And guys, I didn't even feel that bite, which is the crazy part. Um, so I just keep sitting there and I finally reel in. It's time to cast again because every time I cast, it's like there's this new crazy energy as, as it floats down to the bottom. As soon as it hits the bottom, there's almost always a bite. But check this out. This is interesting right here. This Grampus decides to lay down and stop moving. And as soon as he does that, notice that all the smallmouth, they're ready for the next bite. They're excited. They want that movement. They want that action. And when they don't get it, they just kind of swim away, which goes to show that even with the Grampus, every now and then it might be worthwhile to switch out the bait because you want it to be as active as possible. However, the drift down here, just the drop itself was just enough for this next bass to get wild. Watch closely as it works its way down to the bottom. Almost instantaneously, we're going to get a bite here. Look at that, guys. And it was a really good bite. I set the hook and miss it. So, of course, I'm thinking to myself, like, shoot, I don't know if I'm going to get another bite or not. And so now we're just kind of waiting there on the bottom. And as I reel in, I discover that he's taking my bait. You, but this is why you catch a lot of bait, because there's going to be trial and error. Anytime you do something that requires recording, it's, it's going to be tricky. So we're just going to keep going, guys. We're going to keep at it. We're not going to give up until we hook up on a nice bass. That's the goal today. So guys, as it drifts down here, there is a whole pack of bass or, or school of bass that just come shooting in. And the camera gets jerked around a little bit because a bass almost instantaneously rips off the Grampus. So at this point, I don't have a Grampus. I just don't realize it. But it's interesting watching these bass. They shoot back and forth just kind of looking at the bottom, wondering where the next Grampus is going to come from. And it's almost like they're just waiting now. It's like I'm just feeding them and they're having a good time. Okay, that was a good spot. Oh shoot, bait's gone, guys. Oh man, this is brutal. Guys, we just need one fish here. One fish, I'm nervous. Let me grab another monster or Grampus. Let's get it back out there in the water. We've got lots of small mouth around, guys. Let's see what happens if I pitch it back out there. I know they're small mouth and I know they're feeding. I know they're hungry. And it's a matter of letting that Grampus get in the small mouse mouth. So guys, as it drifts back down, sure enough, here comes that hungry school of fish. They start immediately just attacking the Grampus. I set the hook and miss again, um, but I'm feeling encouraged. I know we're close. We have got to hook up here, guys. 
So I'm pumped up. I put a new Grampus on. We throw it back down there. It's drifting down, and this pack or this school of fish, they are ready to eat. They're attacking it as it drifts down. And I mean, just look at this pack <laughs> of ravenous bass. They're ready to eat. And in fact, one hooks itself right here. Watch this. Right there. He's hooked now. And as I set the hook and start to reel in, I feel it for a second, but he comes off as I'm reeling in. So then I get back to the bank and I realize I'm starting to have technical issues with the GoFish cam. It's now locked up again. And guys, unfortunately, that was the end of the GoFish cam for this particular day. So guys, I don't know about you, but I really enjoy just watching the underwater footage. I feel like I learned a lot from it. And guys, I have exciting news. I actually ordered a brand new Go Fish Cam that's going to be on its way here in just a few days. Very excited to get a new one because I want to do a ton more content like this where we get really cool underwater shots. I can promise you one thing, I will return to that spot and we will catch some underwater strikes where I actually catch fish. Um, it's just a matter of putting in the time and I know we can do it. And I also just love watching that kind of content. Content. Um, I noticed the other day I looked into my analytics and only 17.6 uh, people that watch my channel are subscribers. So, so I hope the remaining 82.5 jump on board. Guys, we're going to be doing a lot of unique things. This channel is just getting started. We're going to be doing a lot of underwater footage moving forward and I cannot wait for the future to see what else we get. Let's jump back onto the video and enjoy the rest of the hookups and exciting action. There was one notable problem and that was that I was using super heavy braid, also using a camera and the hookup ratio was very tough so we're gonna switch it to a proper setup now and actually catch some fish and I'm gonna bring you along for the ride so guys I've got one split shot on this is another octopus hook a little bit smaller in size I'm just gonna go through their tail again and this time I'm using the appropriate setup to be able to actually pull some out so we'll see what happens I'm just gonna casually walk back out here pitch it out in front of me and as soon as I feel that bite which there it is I'm gonna let him take it and then set into them, there you go. And I mean, first first cast, fish on, <laughs> just like that. And it's a small, small mouth. I'm sure that that's what was messing with me a little bit earlier with the Go Fish Cam on. But there's your first bass of the day and we're just getting started. And all I had to do was put on the proper setup and I was able to get going. So, all right, let's pitch it back out, see if we can do an upgrade here. I, I'm sure we can. There's another bite. Oh yeah, fish on. <laughs> and just like that guys river smallmouth <laughs> right on and yeah i gotta watch out for that grampus he went shooting up the line but right there is a good example right using that circle hook or that octopus hook we got him right on the corner of the lip which is just the perfect spot for him and there he goes and guys the cool thing about grampus is they're pretty hardy so like for instance this guy he can get bit again like there's no doubt he'll catch me another fish. So we're gonna just pitch it right back out there. Let him do his thing. And guys, there are small mouth shooting in and out of here in this particular zone. Man, those grampus stink, man, I'm telling you. They have an odor to them that is just unique and unpleasant. Fish on. Fish on guys. Another small mouth. Woo. Oh man, and he flung the Grampus, but we did catch the fish, so that's a big part of it, guys. Check this out. Here we go. Beautiful little river smolly right here. Let's pitch him back, and let's get another Grampus on. Uh oh Fish on. Yep. Feels pretty good, guys. Oh yeah. Definitely my nicest smallmouth of the day. That is for sure. He wanted it as well. We'll go ahead and grab him. He flung the Grampus, so I hate it when they do that. I was able to snap a quick pic of this really cool smallmouth and then release him back into the water. All right, guys, this first spot was fun, but I've actually got another spot I want to try out before we run out of bait. So let's head up river, hit up one more spot and see what we can do. So guys, we're hiking to location number two. Location one was fun, got a lot of good bites. Location two should be really good as well. And uh, it just requires a little bit of hiking up river and then through a bunch of reeds, which should be fun. It's actually a very snaky place, so I gotta be extra careful. The good news is, whoa, a lot of these rocks are not exactly slippery, so that's the good news. You can kind of walk up them. 
which is good. Yeah, there's a lot more like growth on these ones. I'm certain there's a ton of Grampus in here. So if I need to get more bait, I know I can, which is great. Let me get up on this big boulder. Yeah, so that's my spot right up there, I see it. Oh, yeah, this spot looks really good, guys. We're just working our way up the river. And right here, we got a flat little zone next to fast moving water. That usually holds lots of fish, guys. I fished it in the past with my buddy Ethan, so I know it holds fish. Now we gotta see if they want Grampus today. Speaking of my buddy Ethan, I'm very proud of him. He's been working really hard on becoming a fly fishing guide and he officially has his license. He has a drift boat. I'm gonna leave his information in the description of this video, so check that out down below. All right, this'll be home base right here. This is where we're gonna put our stuff. It's a perfectly flat rock. Put the stuff down right here. There we go, into the zone. So we're letting it drift. We're letting it drift. We're just filling for a tap right now. Shouldn't take long to fill something. There's a fish. There's a fish. Oh yeah. <laughs> Woo. Nice small mouth. Nice small mouth. First cast guys. Oh, I just flipped the Grampus. Dang it. Wait, no, 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 no. He just sped up something. What did he spit up there? That was interesting. I couldn't get a good eye on it. There it is. What is that? <sighs> Look at this, guys. That is crazy. So, I'm always curious when something gets sped up. He just sped up what appears to be a creek chub, guys. Look at that. That is wild. Let me pitch this out. Let him go. And guys, this is going to sound weird, but I'm going to take the fish that he has ingested. And let's just drift it. I'm gonna drift it, guys. So all we're gonna do is I'm gonna put a bobber on this. I saw something white come flying out of that smallmouth when he tried to like, you know, spit the bait. And we're gonna take full advantage of that. Because if a fish ate it once, they'll be willing to eat it again. I guarantee you we're gonna get a bite on this thing. So we've got half digested fish here. Something naturally that's already been eaten by a smallmouth once, so I know it's something that'll get eaten again. Let's just watch that bobber. I'm even gonna throw it up in that shallow zone. Oh, 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 small mouth nailed it, guys. A small mouth nailed it and got that guy. Oh, man. All right. Shoot. <laughs> well, it was a fun idea anyway. But uh, we're definitely gonna get a bite again. That, there's, there's bass right over here. Right in that zone right there. Should be some more bass. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh, fish on. Fish off. Oh, shoot. Yeah, we, we can definitely drift fish right here. This is a good spot. All right, guys, we know there's some aggressive little smallmouth right here. Let's pitch it right back over there into that zone where we've been getting bites because we know there's smallmouth hanging out. We know there is. They've stolen two of the baits so far. Hoop, got him. Okay, fish on. Woo. Oh, look at that creature. That guy's huge. Wow. That is, now that's a creek chub right there. You can put your hand in it. Whoa, whoa, oh, and there goes the creek chub. Let's see if that creek chub had any buddies. I bet you he does. Let's pitch it right back over there. See if that shoots under again. I bet it will. Oh, okay, something had it. Yep, something still got it. There he goes, fish on. No way. Another creek chub. Dude, we have found like the creek chub <laughs> spot. Uh, we're just ripping them out. There's a uh, fish on. <laughs> Dude, there's so many fish over there. So many creek chub. This is incredible. So guys, what I've done is I've downgraded my hook because we've got a lot of creek chub back in here. And uh, I want the hookup ratio to be as good as it can be. So we're still fishing with for river smallies, but while we're drifting, there's no reason not to also try and catch some jumbo creek chubs because that's just a fun fish to catch. So. We're gonna throw it out here. We got a whole new setup now. Fish on. What is that? Another creek chub. That is why you downsize octopus hooks right there. Just so you don't miss another creek chub bite. Look at that. These guys are super aggressive. I mean, this is like a good six inch creek chub. Looks like we're down to like one or two Grampus. We don't have very many left, so. Fish on. Fish on another creek chub, guys. 
Man, this is like the Creek Chub Mecca over here. Man, this is the biggest one of the day too. This guy, monster. You can kind of see he's a good seven or eight incher. Look at that guy. Now that's a Creek Chub right there. Go ahead and pitch him back. This river is just so uh, healthy. It's crazy, honestly. So guys, we're down to the last Grampus of the day. Let's finish strong. Will it be a small mouth or creek chub that ends the day for us? That is like the creek chub zone right there. Oh, oh, furthest point out stuck on a rock. Now that's a tough way to go. All right, we still got our creek chub. We're up at a new spot now, which is good. All right guys, so I got it loose. This was the creek chub mecca right here, but there's some really good water right over here in front of me. I know it's going under. Let's pitch it up, get ready for a hook set. Oh, there it goes. Fish on. What's it gonna be, guys? Oh, River Smalley, yes. That's a great way to end the day, right here. In fact, we're still in business if he doesn't knock this off. Let's see. Yeah, we've still got our Grampus. We can catch another fish. Yes. River Smalley, that was a fun one to catch. There's something about the river smallmouth here on the Nolichucky that are just super fun. I absolutely love it. And guys, we're going to pitch it out again. Right back over here. See if we can hook into something else. Hoop. Oh, missed it. Missed it, guys. We had a bite. I'm assuming that the... I still got my bait. I actually don't know. But we should probably check. No. Okay, that's it, guys. So something ripped it off right over there. All right, guys, that was a fun way to end the day. I had a blast here on the Nola Chucky. I hope you enjoyed the short amount of footage I did get underwater. I apologize for the glitch. Sometimes these technological things happen. If you guys would like to see more videos from the Nola Chucky, I've got a fun one right here. Or if you prefer to see me in a kayak on Boone Lake catching big striped bass, I've got another one right here. Till next time, tight lines. Yeah.